Hey, how's it going? This is Melinda and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you my collection of Mobile Fidelity Records. Mobile Fidelity started their company back in 1977 and they are known for audiophile, high quality sounding music and I'm a huge fan. So I'm going to show my short but sweet collection of records that I've been able to pick up. Some you can still buy on their website and others are out of print. And I'm just going to be honest with you and show you the records that I think are worth the money and others that I think maybe you should skip. And if you're not a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. I would really appreciate your support. Let me get started with the video and show you the inspiration for why I wanted to make it. This is a David Bowie's The Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders for Mars. This is the original record that I picked up when I first started record collecting. It's on the RCA label and it's on Dynaflex. Dynaflex is that really thin vinyl that was made out of recycled vinyl. And I do think you can find some really good sounding pressings on Dynaflex. My particular copy though had a lot of surface noise. So even though I really enjoyed this record, I was kind of in search of something that sounded a little bit better. I wanted something with a little bit more bass. Maybe Z uh, David Boy's voice sounding a little bit better. I found this one on Amazon for about $12. Uh, probably a year and a half ago and it was from 2016 a really good reissue it was getting very low ratings on Amazon though because most people who were getting a copy uh, were getting one that had a skip on it so they were sending it back my particular copy did not have the skip it sounds really good it was still lacking a little bit of the bass and also separation of sound I thought maybe David Bowie's voice could sound better. Um, just for such a great record, I wanted the best sounding record I could find of this. And I also, speaking of the 216 uh, reissue, I do love, I wanted to show the label. I think it's fantastic. Instead of RCA, it says Bowie. It's on 180 gram vinyl. So I do think that reissue from 2016 was great, especially for the price I paid, only $12, right? That's a killer steal for a wonderful record. However, I had always dreamed of owning this one, the original master recording. And when I first started collecting vinyl, I ran across a copy of this out in the wild, but they wanted $125 for it. You know, at the time when I was just new to collecting, I thought that is crazy. I didn't even really give it a strong consideration. However, after I started collecting more and more and I realized I just never saw this one again, this was never out in the wild, it was hard to find. You know, $125 wasn't really that crazy of a price for what it is. Um, so I've always wanted it, added it to my want list and finally, not that long ago, I went on eBay and just kind of looked around for it. I am not a big fan of buying vinyl on eBay. I felt, I think it's very risky. Uh, but I did find a copy of this album and the seller had a 100% positive feedback and it had thousands of transactions. So I felt very comfortable. They also just sold, you know, you could see by what other things they were selling. They sell a ton of records. So they, they put, put this as a VG++ condition and it was, it was fantastic. The reason why they asked for such a low price for it and uh, I mean they asked for a, an extremely low price. The, if you go on Discogs, the pricing goes for as low as $80 all the way to $299 for this record. It's a very expensive record. This one was under the $80 mark, but it was missing the inserts, the promotional inserts for Mobile Fidelity, and also someone had dropped a little bit of wax from a candle on the back of it. So I bought it. It doesn't have the inserts. The vinyl was in amazing condition. I spent about five minutes getting the wax off of it. It left no permanent damage. And I have an absolutely wonderful copy of this record and I really love it. It has a little bit better bass than the 2016 version. And also I think it's overall a better version. However, it was because of the price I paid for it. 
If I was one of those people looking at on Discog something for $299 or $200, for my personal opinion, I would just stick with this 2016 version. I don't think it's that much of a difference uh, for that kind of price. If you're a collector and this just happens to be your favorite album, by all means, yes, this is really good. But if it's not your favorite and it's just something you want to have in your collection, the 2016 reissue is really good and very affordable. This next record I'm going to show is still on the website. You can still buy it from Mobile Fidelity. It is amazing and I cannot recommend it highly enough. It is Simon and Garfunkel's Parsley, Sage, Rosemary, and Thyme. I think it's a great record and you can find this in dollar bins. All around it's not hard to find what is hard to find is one that's in really good condition and with quiet vinyl this is a very quiet press beautiful harmonies beautiful instruments I really feel like mobile fidelity kicked it out of the park with this it's a dead quiet silent vinyl absolutely beautiful my favorite song on here is Scarborough Fair it just never sound better to me homeward bound is beautiful feeling groovy there's just a lot of really great music on here. I think this is a really great version of this album if you like it. And yes, it's more expensive than what you're going to pay for a, a dollar bin, but you're going to get a better sound. This is really worth it. This next record I found at the end of last year, it's out of print. I think this came out back in the 80s. Um, you're not going to find it now on the websites, but it is Stevie Nicks' Belladonna. This is a really great record. I already owned the original, but when I found this, I couldn't resist. Um, Edge of 17 is one of my favorite songs of all time. Stop Dragging My Heart Around is incredible. Leather and Lace, there's just a lot of really great songs on here. To be honest with you, I felt like um, Edge of 17, maybe I had my hopes up way too high of what it could potentially sound like. It didn't really overly impress me. But Leather and Lace and Stop Dragging My Heart Around and so many other songs on here just sounded really good. So I was very happy with purchasing this and I got it out in the wild. I think if you find things like this out in the wild, you'll pay less than if you're buying it on eBay or Discogs. For some reason, I've just had better luck that way. That's maybe just me. But this is a good record and I would say if you can find it for a really good price, uh, go for it. Don't don't overspend on it. It's not just amazing. And also there is a reissue out there that I have not heard. It might even be better. I'm not really sure. So that's just my opinion on Stevie Nicks' Belladonna. This is another record that I picked up. Cosmic Thing by B-52s. This is um, a really good record. I think this came out maybe 1989 maybe early 90s i think this is a digital source though it's lacking the warmth that analog records all these others that i've already shown it lacks the warmth that those have but if you're looking for this record for one it's hard to find on vinyl you rarely see an original but um, this it does sound really good for what it is i personally um i feel like i really loved it when i was younger uh, this is just my opinion. It has not aged well for my musical tastes. Love Shack, uh, Deadbeat Club, Rome, all of those songs put you in a really happy, chipper mood, but it just for some reason, for my age, I just don't love it like I used to. However, it's just a really happy record, and I would say if you are a big fan of this record, this is a really good way to go because like I said, finding something, an original of this is very hard. And this is a very clean, good version of the B-52's Cosmic Thing. Here is my collection of the cars. I am a huge fan of the cars, so having the opportunity to buy these on original master recordings was a no-brainer for me. They're still available. I think this one's out of stock right now for the most part, but you can, if you look close enough, you can find it. This is a killer record, and I had the original. This one blows it away, and the original's good too. But this is so cool. Um, Let the Good Times Roll, Moving in Stereo. This is such a killer record. Very happy to have that version of it. Also, Candy O. This is an, a killer. Let's Go is an amazing song. This is a really great punky kind of record. It's just incredible. 
I'm a bigger fan of Candy O for owning this particular copy of it. And I did own the original. This one kills it. I love it. So this is another one that's still available. That's a really great press. Heartbeat City with the cars, another great record. We've got Drive, You Might Think, Magic, just incredible music. I think there are other really good sounding presses of this album though. You don't have to go with an original master recording. However, I, I really like it. I'm really happy with this one. I think it sounds great. And I did have an original. This one beats the original. Here is my favorite jazz album and you need a dead, quiet, silent pressing to truly enjoy this record, in my opinion, and it's so hard to find anyway that this is the way to go, the original master recording of In a Silent Way by Miles Davis. I, not, I mean, I'm, I'm new to jazz, I don't have a ton of jazz, but I cannot recommend this one enough. This is a killer record, and to own it on such a quiet pressing it's just so dynamic. It's just such a great, beautiful sound stage. I, I cannot recommend this enough. I think you can still get this one on their website. Once this one goes out of print though, I think it's going to be really expensive. I think this is a really great record to own if you're into jazz at all. Just really, really love it. Here's another one I found out in the wild. This is out of print. You're not going to be able to find this one very easily but I got a really great deal on it. I don't think it goes for a lot of money. If you see it, pick it up because it is worth it. Uh, Steve Miller band, Fly Like an Eagle. I love that song and the space intro into it makes it worth having this particular copy because it sounds phenomenal. There's um, just amazing songs on here. It all sounds really great. And uh, I can't re recommend this one enough. Like I said, as far as original master recordings, this one is not an extremely expensive one. It's not in high demand, but it's great. And I'm so thrilled that I found it out in the wild for about 20 bucks. Sounds incredible and I really enjoy it. Here's another one that's not gonna break the bank, but sounds really great. I'm partial to this band, very underrated, but I think it's fantastic. And it is Poco. The album is Legends. A lot of you have probably never heard of the band Poco. Very underrated, but very talented. Um, Randy Meisner and Timothy B. Schmidt of the Eagles originally were a member of Poco. And there's a beautiful acoustic song called Crazy Love. It's my very favorite by them. Probably should have mentioned it on um, as an honorable mention on my favorite songs of all time because I really think it's great. Uh, Heat of the Night is another hit that was on this album. This is a really good one that I picked up for $8. And uh, when I took it up to the cash register, the owner of the store just kind of commented under his breath that this had been over underpriced. He should have charged more for it. I don't really know. I don't think I, it goes for anything more than $20. Definitely worth a pickup. It sounds great. And this is a really good album. Poco Legends. I've talked about this one enough that I'll just give it a brief mention. You all know Styx, The Grand Illusion. I found this at the end of last year on the original master recording. Blows my original that I had away and I really love it. It's just a great record. If you see this one for a decent price, pick it up because it's absolutely killer. Here's another one in my collection, The Beatles, Abbey Road. This is one of my favorites, if not my favorite record in my entire collection. I absolutely love Abbey Road. And I have a first US press and uh, this. This was what I had before. I found this one, picked it up. It was a reasonable price. Sounds great. I think on eBay, I've seen crazy prices for it. I wouldn't overpay for it. This, is sound, this one sounds really good. I think um, a lot of people say the UK early presses are better and I probably believe that. I think that's probably a good way to go if you can find one in good condition. This is a really good one though. And I will say though, uh, at the end of last year, the Giles Martin 50th anniversary remastering, I think I like that one a little bit better than this. Uh, I think it just has a little bit better sound so even though I really do like this one, it is not the best uh, one I have in my collection and I wouldn't pay a ton of money for it. So if you could find it for a really good to cheap price, I'd go for it. Otherwise I'd pass. I'd just go ahead and go get the uh, Giles Martin 
50th anniversary one for about 25 to 35 dollars so that's just my opinion on that y'all can leave the comments below if you disagree with me this record is very hard for me to show right now i have very sentimental a little bit of sadness towards it um, it's the almond brothers eat a peach the very famous hit melissa is on here my daughter's name is melissa she just got married a little over a week ago. We had spent eight months planning a beautiful wedding, a beautiful reception with a DJ, food, you name it. It was going to be incredible. And it, the coronavirus just canceled everything. It just ruined it all. And uh, so we went from having eight months to plan a wedding to planning a wedding in one week. It was just immediate family. The reason why I'm bringing this up is I love the song Melissa. I was so looking forward to seeing the daddy-daughter dance. My husband and her were going to dance to the song Melissa. I did not get to see that. I feel like I was robbed. I was robbed of watching them cut the wedding cake. Just a very... I'm still pretty bitter about the whole thing, even though they ended up having a great wedding. And the marriage is more important than the wedding, and I know that. but. This is just a beautiful record. I think it is out of print now, so it's going to cost you a little more than um, what I paid for it a couple years ago. This is a beautiful sounding Presa Vita Peach. A lot of times there's a lot of surface noise. This is a great record. People played it to death. So when you're looking for originals, you got to look for an absolutely killer sounding copy. They're hard to find. This is a really good one. So if you see this one out in the wild, pick it up. This is a really good one. Eat a Peach by the Almond Brothers. Now, going back to the Beatles, I found this one. Uh, original master recording of the uh, Magical Mystery Tour. For me, this is one of my favorite Beatles albums. A lot of people, when they're making their lists, put it very low. I totally disagree. I love it. But I love this U.S. version. That's what makes it so killer for me. Strawberry Fields Forever, Penny Lane, Full on a Hill, Magical Mystery Tour, uh, All You Need Is Love. The U.S. version of this album is absolutely killer, and I was thrilled to find this. I did have about a 1970 copy on Apple. This one's better than that. Uh, but just for this video, I kind of wanted to, just out of curiosity, to see. I have a little... EP box set, a Japanese box set. Uh, this is the UK version. It does not have all of the great songs that the US version has, but I wanted to do a little uh, copy, just listen to each um, mis magical mystery tour of the song. I listened to it on this uh, red Japanese vinyl that came out in the early 80s to late 70s. I compared it to this particular copy as far as Magical Mystery Tour goes, if you like your music to sound really bright, I highly recommend this EP. I think it does sound a lot better. But this overall has a really good sound to it. It's not quite as bright, but you know I'm also getting the songs I really love. So for that reason, I didn't pay a lot of money for this. I don't recommend you paying a lot of money for it. If you can find a steal on it, get it. Otherwise, I kind of wish I had bought the mono version of it that came out in 2014. So, you know, this is good though. I'm happy with it. And unless there's a reissue done, this is going to do me very well. And I'll just take on to that one. And finally, here is a record that I think everybody should have in their collection. It's absolutely amazing. And most of you do. It is uh, the Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. I'm just showing my very first copy that I bought for $8 very early on in my vinyl collection. This is a Swedish press. Does not sound that good. A lot of surface noise. Um, whoever owned it before me thoroughly enjoyed it way more than they should have, I guess. It's just a lot of surface noise. It wasn't a perfect version of this album. But I fell in love with this album and decided I needed an upgrade. So. I went ahead and picked up, this is a reissue uh, from, I don't remember what year it came out, but it's really great. It has, um, let's see, James Guthrie, Joe Plante, and Bernie Grunman reissued this. It's incredible. This is my husband's very favorite version of it. He thinks it sounds really great. Uh, not long after I bought this, though, I came across a steal on an original master recording of Dark Side of the Moon. 
and for $35, I could not resist picking this up, even though I just got this version of it. Uh, you know, I really, this is my go-to favorite copy. This is my husband's go-to favorite copy. I got a really good price on this, but I've seen on eBay and on Discogs, some people try to sell this for 100 to 150, maybe even more money than that. I, I think for the money, um, if it's become, if you can get this for $35 like I did, go for it. You won't regret it. But if you're talking $150, just get this $32 reissue. You won't be disappointed. It's not a huge difference in sound. This is really good. So those are my mobile fidelity records that I own. Please let me know if you have any recommendations, something that you really like. Also, I want to give a shout out to a channel called True Audio Files. The guy's name is Jim. He has an amazing channel. I'm going to leave the link below. My video is over, so please just uh, check out his channel. Just go to the link and give him a sub and say hello. So please subscribe to my channel and thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.